For some reason, I always want to call those fast times at the El Royale. Like it's Ridgemont High or some shit. I don't know why. Bad Times at the El Royale. So Bad Times at the El Royale is written and directed by Drew Goddard. He directed and I believe wrote Cabin in the Woods also. And this, how do you explain this movie? Essentially there's this hotel with the state line division of California and Nevada going right through it. This hotel is divided by these two states. So one half of the hotel is Nevada, one half of the hotel is California. And there's money involved and a lot of people at this hotel for different reasons. Then it concentrates on someone, does a flashback on their story, then concentrates on the perspective of someone else while that thing was happening and then a flashback on their story. Convoluted plot, hopefully it all makes sense in the end. Like everyone does a good job in this movie. Some people are more important and more relevant than others. Some people you think are gonna be the main focus of it all that they're not. Was it a little more convoluted than it needed to be? Yeah. I get the novelty of flashing back and then coming back and then flashing back for that person and then flashing back for that person. But I think this movie used that novelty of jumping around a bit too much. There's actually this scene in the last act. The last act really has all the momentum. It all just comes to a head and I really like the last act. But even when the final act is going then it does one more flashback. And just kind of, I felt the momentum stop. Like he hit a break wall like oh all right we're going back again it quickly goes back to the present but i just feel like it's like a racer who's almost at the finish line and they stub their toe they don't fall they just kind of do a stumble and then they keep running and they get to the finish line in the first two acts of this movie i just wish the movie would sit still long enough for you to get invested and watch the plot going forward before it hits the reset button and takes you back and shows you a flashback when a flashback is a scene in and of itself or when it bounces over to another character's perspective and you essentially see the first act again it takes the momentum and resets the momentum so it's like a bungee cord effect the momentum's going forward and it snaps you back. Then you have to re-experience that momentum again. You can do that a couple times, but it starts feeling repetitive at a point if a movie does it too much. I feel like this movie might have done it a bit too much. I suppose that's why I like the last act of this movie best. It's the act of this movie that sits still long enough for you to just enjoy the scene and intensity as it's rolling out towards you. It has one moment of flashback, sure, like I said, but all in all, the last act of this movie is what brings it all together. It does feel like like when 25 years ago and a lot of directors were like, I'm gonna be like Tarantino, I'm gonna do what he did. It's like, let's been 25 years since, so let's start doing that again. However, if you're gonna try to do a Tarantino-esque movie, I know he hasn't cornered the entire market. It's not like he owns the concept of doing something like this. But what sets Tarantino apart is he has engaging dialogue throughout. But this movie doesn't have that engaging dialogue. I bring it up here because this is the writer and director of Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods had that fun dialogue. There are large sections of time I'm like, I'm just watching people do shit. I would just expect the director of Cabin in the Woods to have more fun with this kind of concept in the dialogue department. It's unfair to imply that I wasn't intrigued. Like, I'm intrigued as to why there's a secret passageway behind the rooms. I'm intrigued as to why that person's tied up. But still the tone and pacing just felt a little flat for me. At least flatter than should be. Flatter than the implication of the editing. Because the movie's already doing the quirky little, oh, bounce to that person, now you see their perspective, bounce to here, now you're seeing a flashback. That method and format's a bit fun. But the movie never has as much fun as that would imply. Like it wants to be the super serious crime drama just with fun editing. Makes it feel a little conflicted. I don't require every movie to be funny or fun. I just also don't want movies to leave me feeling like the director's flexing, like look how pretentious and clever I am. When it's like, all right, well, you have flashbacks, you have different perspectives, but in the end, it's, it's still just a crime movie that's not half as clever as I've seen before. There are a couple of heartfelt bits of dialogue with Jeff Bridges' character. He's the one you kind of latch onto and empathize with the most. No one crushes it more than Chris Hemsworth's character who comes in at the last act and he completely, dude, he's a scene stealer. And no one in the movie for their scenes is as much of a scene stealer as Chris Hemsworth is in the last act. As in the end, I feel like I was bagging on this movie a bit more than I planned to. I just didn't enjoy this movie as much as a lot of other people did. I'd rather watch Snatch or any Tarantino movie, really. It does feel like second rate Hateful Eight or even Lucky Number Slevin, probably that before this. And this really isn't a complaint, it's just an observation. But the novelty of having this hotel that's right on the state line between Nevada and California, literally the state line goes through the hotel, so one side's Nevada, out of one side's California. It's just, it's that, it's a novelty. And thinking about it, there's nothing in the movie that really makes that relevant at all. You could have a hotel that's in the middle of California or a hotel that's in the middle of Nevada and essentially the movie would be exactly the same thing. Actually, at one point, roulette and gambling comes into it. So, all right, Nevada. Still, I don't know why they had to have the hotel divided by the state line unless A, it's a real place, which I don't know, I didn't Google it. Or B, it's a cool thing in the trailer that would get people to watch the movie. And here it is, this is gonna make half of you knuckle up and the other half is gonna validate you. But I always say I never claim to be a critic or a role model, and here's why. Gun to my head, I'd probably rather watch Venom again than this again. So I will say bad times at the El Royale would probably be a better time.
If you're drunk. Yeah, now it's a party. This kind of actually makes me put my tinfoil hat on. You hear Hollywood stories about how a director of that movie is actually not the director of that movie. It was actually the producer, like the Wachowskis produced V for Vendetta. Joss Whedon produced Cabin in the Woods. Drew Goddard directed Cabin in the Woods. Then you hear stories about how the Wachowskis might have directed V for Vendetta. Because the director of V for Vendetta hasn't done anything that's been like V for Vendetta or felt like the director of V for Vendetta. In fact, V for Vendetta feels more like the Wachowskis directed it. And that goes for Cabin in the Woods, the Hollywood rumor is Joss Whedon directed Cabin in the Woods? And after seeing this, I look at Cabin in the Woods, I'm like, yeah, Cabin in the Woods had more fun dialogue like Joss Whedon would have. Bad Times at the El Royale doesn't feel like the director of Cabin in the Woods directed Bad Times at the El Royale. Well, that's the bullshit Hollywood tinfoil hat. Those rumors are just out there, but after seeing this movie, it, just, it does make you think, what if? All right, so Bad Times at the El Royale, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Or what's your favorite Tarantino-esque movie that's not a Tarantino movie? They're out there, you know. Whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.